Hey, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for watching. I'm Jim Langley. So while I was working on this project, my How to Build Wheels the Easy Way video hit 500,000 views. That's awesome and I can't thank you enough for watching the video, for all the comments and all the subscribes. I get a lot of great questions from that video and a lot I turn into videos. I think I now have about 23 videos about wheels, mostly based on things you asked me to cover and I enjoy making those videos and teaching how to build wheels and all the things that go along with it. So today's video is based on one of those questions. Uh, quite a few viewers asked what my basic setup is to lace a wheel, how I handle the hub, the rim, the spokes, you know, there's a lot going on. And I'm going to show you how I do it, the tools that I use and the basic setup today. It's pretty straightforward, not complicated, and I think you're going to like it. In case you haven't seen my How to Build Wheels the Easy Way video, I'll put a link to it at the very end of this video. So keep an eye open at the end of the video for that link to pop up. And if you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe because it helps my channel and I appreciate it. I want to make sure you understand that this video is about the setup for lacing wheels. I'm not actually teaching how to lace wheels here. To start lacing, I put the parts for the wheel on the workbench. I'm using a Wheel Fanatic Shuffler spoke nipple holder here. As you shake it, the nipples fall into neat rolls with their tops facing up. This makes it easy to pick the nipples up with the nipple inserter tool to feed them into the rim. Without a shuffler like this, you can just lay the nipples in a pile on the workbench. That's a little slower because you then have to pick up each nipple by hand and place it on your inserter tool. Also, when nipples are in piles, you can end up knocking some of them off the workbench if you're trying to lace wheels quickly. Right now with this first set of spokes, they'll stick out far enough from the rim that I can pick up the nipples by hand and thread them on the spokes that way. I'm sitting on a shop stool that's a little lower than the top of the bench. That lets me support the rim on the bench and my legs as I lace. That's important because some spokes will need to hang straight down, which they couldn't do if I worked directly over the bench. By holding the rim like this on the workbench and your legs, your two hands are free, one to hold the hub and one to feed the spokes. And thread on the nipples. Some mechanics like to drill a hole near the edge of the workbench they build wheels on. This gives you a place to put the hub axle in to keep the hub upright. When the hub's in the hole, it won't roll off the workbench and you can turn it too. So you can rotate the wheel as you place spokes into their holes in the rim. Recently, Park Tool came out with a cool wheel holder tool shown here that can be bench mounted or held in a vise. I haven't tried one yet, but I think it could work to lace wheels on. I've experimented with the hole in the bench setup, but I find it's not any easier or faster for me than just holding the wheel in my lap as I show here. There are many different methods for lacing wheels. Some experienced wheel builders like to put all spokes in the hub at once at the beginning. Others like to put in two sets of spokes together. Over the years, lacing lots of wheels and teaching people how to lace wheels, I've settled on using a one spoke at a time method just because it's very simple and you're very unlikely to make mistakes if you do it one spoke at a time. See how I twisted the spokes in my finger to get them to fan out and make them easy to put into the spoke holes? If you oil or lube your spoke nipples and rims, you'll get the lube on your clothes lacing with the wheel in your lap like this. So you probably want to wear an apron. For a spoke feeder tool, I use an efficient Velo Tools mull finger. It's a sweet machined and knurled holder with just the right taper on the end to grab nipples securely. They don't thread on, you just push the tool in and it jams inside the nipple nice and tight so that you can feed it into the rim and turn the tool to start nipples on spokes. The best thing is that the nipples won't drop off the tool. That's important because when you're lacing hollow rims, if a nipple drops off the tool, it could go inside the rim. That's a mistake that can really slow down your lacing and be super frustrating too. Often the only way to get the nipple out is to keep shaking the rim until the escaped nipple finds the valve hole and falls out. Yeah!
If you don't want to buy a special nipple picker upper, nipple holder tool, you can make your own. You just take a section of spoke, just cut the threaded end off the spoke. And if you grind it or file it to a point like here, you can do it on a sander, whatever you have. Then if you pick up the nipple, if you stick the spoke in, it'll hold on to the nipple, won't fall off, just like the special custom tool, the mole finger tool that I showed you. By now you probably get the idea of how I lace the wheels, so I'm speeding up the video for the rest of the lacing. But I can't actually do it this fast. <laughs> it took me about nine minutes to lace this wheel. Some builders are much faster, but getting it right is most important. Speaking of faster spoke lacing, something that's pretty cool is that with enough practice, you actually get to where you can reach into the box of 100 or even 500 spokes, and most of the time you will pull out the exact number of spokes needed to fill the hub, which saves the time of having to reach again for more. Bicycle hubs and rims can be expensive, and you don't want to risk dropping and damaging them when lacing wheels. So instead of my simple method of holding things, you might actually like a special tool to hold the rim and hub in the perfect position for putting the spokes in. That tool is called a lacing jig, or wheel building stand. It holds the hub and rim for you. With this special tool, there's less chance you'll drop or damage expensive components. Plus, both hands are free to place the spokes and nipples, which can make lacing faster. Wheel builders who like to use building stands like this sometimes make their own. This one is from plans to build your own on the very helpful wheel building website SpokeCalc. One of the nicest that you can buy is this one, the Noble Lacing Jig by Noble Wheels of London. Lacing jigs like this are easily adjusted for different sized wheels. I'll put a link in the description to these lacing jigs. I hope you found this video interesting and helpful. If you've got wheel lacing setup tips or favorite tools, maybe a lacing jig you made yourself, it would be great if you'd share it all in a comment. If you've got questions about anything in this video, just ask and I'll reply. For more wheel building tips from finding spoke lengths to tricks for keeping spokes tight to all about spoke tensionometers, I have a video on it, so check out my other ones. Thanks again for watching, please subscribe and I'll see you back here in the shop.